Hey there, I am Marina Orms, the founder of Astrology Heals at astrologyheals.com. And today I wanted to focus on the question, does astrology work? It's kind of a big question. Um, we uh, are looking at what is astrology, right? What What is astrology? Astrology is the uh, way that we have as human beings of looking at the sky and observing the way the sky changes over time and how those changes in the sky correlate with our experiences of themes or qualities or uh, things that tend to come up as themes or qualities uh, and how those things evolve over time uh, in our experience here on earth. Um, so uh, think about our ancestors uh, who did not have electric lights. It doesn't matter what part of the world you're from. It doesn't matter your culture or your background there were no electric lights on the planet before electricity was invented. And the sky, therefore, was a big deal. Um, our observations of the sky were very connected to our human experiences. And obviously, the most obvious one is day and night. Uh, it's, it's kind of inescapable <laughs> that day and night bring different qualities to our lives and different themes and different things that we think about and focus on and do. Um, so obviously, when there's daylight, we can do different activities Um then we and at night we might be more you know asleep <laughs> we might, we're, it was certainly a quiet time it's a slower time it's a different time um so there's night and day that it has to do with the rotation of the earth on its axis and whether um the sun is shining on the half of the earth that is face uh, that we're on right that whether um uh, when the sun is shining on our half of the earth, it's daytime. So um, so that's the sun and uh, the earth's rotation. We also notice um, that the planets go through the zodiac. The zodiac is just a belt. I actually have a separate video. So if you're interested in this, there's a video on my YouTube channel called uh, What is the Zodiac? Um, so check that out for more details on what the zodiac is. But the zodiac means that uh, the planets are going through these different parts of the sky, different, basically different segments of the sky. If you think of a pie, um, you know, it's like, uh, you know, the raisin and the pie is going around the edge and it's going through the different slices of pie as it goes around the edge of the pie. So uh, so if you think of each slice of pie as a different uh, uh, zodiac sign, um, then the raisin or whatever planet we're looking at is going around and it goes through the different signs. So the sun goes through all 12 zodiac signs throughout the year. And that is why uh, we have uh, a, a sun sign. <laughs> and so it's one of the first things you learn about astrology, probably as a child, is that you are a particular sign. And that means that the sun was in that sign when you were born. In other words, the raisin going around the edge of the pie was in the pie uh, slice that with that part of the sky and that part of the zodiac um, when you were born on your birthday. Um, and so the because the raisin keeps going or the sun keeps going around the pie, it's going to come back around to that slice every year. And so that's why you have a birthday, which we in astrology call a, a solar return. So in other words, the, um, the sun or the raisin going around the pie comes back to where it was when you were born. It's in the same sign or the same slice of pie that it was in uh, when you were born. And that's your solar return. Uh, the solar return is is basically your birthday, right? The birthday is a calendar day that represents that day that uh, that you were born. So, um, so we have uh, this. This is the the first way that we begin to be introduced to astrology is by sun sign. 
Um, there are, there is a moon. You also have a moon sign. So at the time you were born, the moon was also in a particular slice of the pie um, in the sky. And uh, maybe the moon was a blueberry. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making this up. So, so the blueberry moon is a, it could be in the same slice as the sun, or it could be in a completely different one. It might be in any of the 12 um, slices. So, uh, or zodiac signs. So you have a sun sign and you have a moon sign. If you are um, curious about, you probably know what your sun sign is because it's pretty easy to look that up. Most people, again, you know, get introduced to that idea in childhood. But if you're looking for your moon sign, uh, all you have to do is Google moon sign calculator <laughs> and you can find uh, calculators online that will uh, help you identify your moon sign. And um, the moon the sun, like I said, it takes uh, 12 months or a full year to go around the pie, um, but the moon goes faster around the pie. So the moon actually moves through each slice or each sign of the zodiac every two to two and a half days. So in other words, a full moon cycle means uh, the moon has gone all the way around the pie back to uh, where it started in, and it takes about 27 days to do that. So um, so in 27 days, the moon is making a full circle, whereas the sun takes a full uh, year. So uh, every moon cycle, 27 days, the moon is going around. Obviously, it goes around that pie many times in a year, 12 times or a little more um, in a year for it to go all the way around. So so you have a moon sign. The moon changes signs every two to two and a half days. So my point is that you can Google moon sign calculator and you can put in your birthday. And if you know your birth time, that's going to narrow it down to what your exact moon sign is. But if you don't know your birth time, um, or you don't know it when you're putting your information into the calculator, it might, it well, it might give you a moon sign if the moon was in the same sign all day, or it might give you two options of moon signs. If the moon changed, if, if you were born on a day that the moon changes signs. So, uh, so in other words, uh, you will get it at least narrowed down to two possibilities of your moon sign if you use a moon sign calculator. Um, uh, okay, and so that's how you find your moon sign. And okay, back to our pie. We have our raisin and our blueberry. Um, and now we could uh, think of all the other planets. So it's not only the sun and the moon, it's also Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. These are the main, and there are many other, um, actually many other asteroids and different points that astrologers might look at, um, but those are the main ones, the major ones. And we call those in astrology, the 10 planets even though uh, sun and moon are not technically planets, but in astrology, uh, the term planet applies also to the sun and the moon. And that is because from our perspective here on earth, the sun and the moon are parts of ourselves, just like all of the other planets represent parts of ourselves. Um, so, so you have your, you know, a pie... <laughs> with your raisin, your blueberry, and then all the other berries included. The other eight planets are in there somewhere. Maybe we got a raspberry, a cranberry, I don't know, huckleberry, what's your favorite berry? So um, so anyway, all 10 of the planets are in the pie somewhere. And that's what you get when you get a natal chart done is you is an astrologer or if you use a chart calculator online, um, they will tell you wh what sign or what slice of the pie each of your planets is in. So that gives you your natal chart. Um, also, there is a sky at any given moment. So at a current moment, um, uh, you can uh, see where the planets are and what that means for the collective, for our 
present moment experience, or you can look at a point in history or a point in the future that you might want to look at and find out where the planets are and what are the themes, what are the qualities, what is the feeling or the vibe of that uh, moment in time. And, and your natal chart gives you the feel or the vibe of that moment in time when you were born that gets um, lived out through you, through you living out your life, you are fulfilling the potential of that moment in time, basically that natal chart. Um, and so, uh, it, it, so we talked about moon sign calculator. I've got a whole playlist on this channel, uh, this YouTube channel. If you um, identify your moon sign, you can watch a video that describes what that moon sign means. So you probably can find tons of stuff online about your sun sign. Uh, all kinds of information is available about that. Fewer people know their moon signs or what that means for them in their lives. Um, so I give you a little taste of that in that playlist. Um, find your own moon sign. Is your moon in Taurus? Is your moon in Gemini? What is your moon in? And what does that mean for you and your life? So uh, check out that playlist to find your um, uh, some more information about your moon sign. Obviously, um, you know, I don't uh, it would be a lot to talk about every single planet. Uh, maybe I will someday. <laughs> and you can uh, get, you can schedule a reading, which will give you uh, the, uh, you know, insight into your natal chart where all the planets, all the berries are <laughs> and what it means for you. So each uh, of the planets in the sky represents a uh, particular part of ourselves. So, um, for instance, the sun is about our, um, our sense of self, our identity, the way that we shine, the shape that we take in the world. Our moon is uh, more about our inner experience, our needs, our feelings, um, our needs for caring and nurturing and what takes care of us. The uh, planet Mercury is about communication and how our minds work and mental processes. I'll, I would actually, um, I've done some, I, ha I also have an, a playlist here that's astrology for nurses. Um, so you can learn more about uh, the planet Mercury in one of those videos because I directly address learning styles and how Mercury reflects uh, our different learning styles and what we need to be able to hear and process information. Um, but, uh, and some sometime I'd like to do more of uh, uh, explaining what Mercury looks like in your chart and, and what it means uh, in different placements, because it does indicate how we process information. Um, how we think about things, how we communicate, how we how we speak and listen and share information. So that's Mercury. Um, Venus. Venus is about love. <laughs> it's about values. It's about things that make us feel good. Things that um, the way that we want to receive. So Venus can relate to themes of how we receive money, how we receive gifts, how we receive pleasure, how we receive things that make us feel good and things we feel good about. Um, so that's Venus and, um, and on and on. So all the planets represent a different part of ourselves. And this is my book, Astrology Heals. Um, and in this book, you can find it at astrologyheals.com. You can also find it if you go onto Amazon and Google, or not Google, <laughs> but search on Amazon for Astrology Heals. Marina Orms is my name. I'm the author. Um, okay. And then, um, so in this book, I talk about the, first of all, um, the bigger picture of healing and what healing looks like when we think about it in terms of not just our physical selves and our physical well-being, but our wellness, our wholeness that includes our bodies, our minds, our spiritual selves, our emotional needs, all the parts of ourselves, these different dimensions um, that astrology can give us insight into. Um, so here is a little, uh, whoops a little graphic from, from the book. And um, we're looking at how uh, 
the body, the, our physical body relates to earth and uh, the earth element in astrology. Mind relates to air. Emotion relates to water and spirit relates to fire. Um, so the different, the 12 signs of the zodiac um, fall into four elements. Uh, so there are three signs in each element, earth, air, fire, and water. And those can help us support our uh, parts of ourselves that are, are learning and growing and healing in these different areas. So in other words, if your son is in um, an earth sign, it means that you are learning how to have a sense of self, um, a, a way of expressing yourself, a way of being, a way of taking shape and showing up and shining in the world that is practical, that is focused on the physical, the tangible, the results that the world has to offer. And, um, and then, of course, so here's, this is page 16 from my book. Um, it tells you what all the different planets represent, what different parts of yourself they are. Um, and then there's another graphic I want to show you about how we are learning about these different parts. Um, so whole self wellness, mind, body, spirit, emotion um, is part of how we are learning and growing. Uh, stepping into our highest potential in terms of our wholeness and wellness. Um, we are also working on manifesting results. In other words, manifestation is like this sort of, you know, considered to be like a woo woo thing. But if you manifestation is simply the act of intending something and then making it happen. Um, and so there are lots of ways we do that, right? If we want to manifest something, we, um, we intend this is the result that we want. This is the thing we want. This is the outcome or the feeling that we want to experience. And then there are lots of ways we can support ourselves in getting there. Um, we can uh, imagine it, first of all, right? This like the ability to even imagine what we want. And second of all, um, we can take actions that help to make it happen, right? It's not going to happen if you don't do something about it. Um, and third, we can provide support for ourselves in overcoming any emotional resistance or blocks we may have to, you know, maybe we don't want to change. Maybe we have an emotional pattern that uh, comes up when we think about uh, the change or the manifestation of the thing that we want. Um, and then spirit or fire is the final uh, element. And that would be, uh, well, spirit is fire is the ability to act and take action. So, uh, so that, so we've got spirit, um, which is action, mind, which is uh, the ability to think and problem solve and vision and imagine, uh, emotion, which is water, which is the ability to support our emotional process, work through emotional blocks, and, uh, and then body, which is physical, which is earth, which is our um, uh, desiring results, right? It's the thing that we want. It's also the practical approaches that we use to uh, get from here to there. You know, what are the steps you need to take? What is the plan? Uh, what is the way of, uh, of getting from here to there? So, uh, so in other words, we have these ways that we as human beings learn, grow, heal, um, step into our highest potential, uh, become more creative, happier, more joyful. Um, and the, the ways that we do that is by, uh, well, one way is by loving ourselves, supporting ourselves, uh, getting ourselves the things we need, um, taking action as we need. And astrology can support us in all of that because it helps us see how these different qualities or different themes are there to uh, for us to use as tools. Um, okay, so there are many different ways that that works. 
and uh, I don't want to overwhelm you. I can say that if you schedule a um, a, a one-on-one session with me or with an astrologer you trust, um, that you can get support by working with the way that the planets are arranged in your chart to understand where your challenges are, where your opportunities are, where your strengths are, um, and what it will look like for you to work through some of the things uh, in your life that, um, that are there to help you learn and grow. Um, and so as evolutionary astrologers, um, which is my background, uh, I, you know, I don't use astrology as a, to predict things. I don't use astrology to forecast or create horoscopes. I use astrology to get insight, to support ourselves in the process that uh, is um, you know, part of how, of why we're here as human beings to learn and grow and become our best selves. Um, so in the kind of astrology that I do, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't paint things as black and white. It doesn't say, um, you know, there's danger around this corner or, uh, don't take this action because it's going to bring bad results. Um, rather it gives you these different qualities that you might be working with. So um, in other words, if you choose a particular um, date to do something on, uh, it's not that there's a good date and a bad date. You know, I get I get that question a lot. Like, when should I schedule my wedding? Um, when should I initiate this big project that I'm doing? You know, other kinds of questions. Where should I move to? When should I move? You know, should I do this? Should I do that? And the answer I always give is it doesn't matter. It's <laughs> it's up to you. But here is, uh, here is the timing that will um, have this theme or this quality to it. So if you have your wedding on this weekend, for example, you know, the moon is going to be in this sign. So like say, okay, the moon is in Taurus that weekend. Um, so if you choose to have your wedding when the moon is in Taurus, what it means is that there's people are going to be really focused on uh, what you're wearing and the food and how it feels. And uh, there's going to be a very earthy, practical approach approach to things. Um, it, it could have a feeling of simplicity, of practicality. Um, things will be tangible. Things will make sense. Uh, or at least that will be the quality that is present. Um, again, lots of focus on the senses, how things taste, what are the smells, what, you know, what are the flowers that you're including? What are, how do they smell? <laughs> um, all those questions about how we take in beauty through our senses are going to be a big uh, part of that wedding. Um, art, um, and and the appearance of things, you know, giving attention to detail in terms of um, how things look, how they feel, how they how they come through your senses, and that feeling of beauty. Um, if if you know you had the same wedding on a different weekend, um, maybe the moon is in Libra. <laughs> which is also, um, you know, a, a, you know, they're all good times to have a wedding. They're just going to have a different feeling. If the moon is in Libra, people are going to be more focused on the relationship. You know, what is the nature of the relationship between you and the person you're marrying or, or their relationship with you? What are the, rela what are the family relationships uh, and family dynamics that come up? These are going to be themes that will be present that will be a focus of that time period. So if the wedding is held, then um, that experience of uh, the, the how we communicate, um, how we relate to each other, what needs to get sorted out or work through in our relationships to uh, the, as a result of this wedding happening, right? It's going to bring up themes of a relationship. Maybe there are some past relationships that need to get resolved or completed or something that needs to happen around the theme of relationship. So again, 
There are 12 signs. The moon could be in any of them, uh, depending on the time of year. The sun will also be in a particular sign. So what you can tell from looking at astrology, if you're choosing a date, is you can tell what will the themes or qualities be uh, that are present during that time. It doesn't mean one is better than another, right? It's just, and it, and it doesn't even mean that you have to pick the right one for you. <laughs> it's just that that's uh, most likely what's where the focus will be, what the feeling will be, what the themes or qualities will be. Um, and so you can choose based on that, or you can say, hey, you know, this was the weekend, everybody was available. Isn't that interesting that it also happens to be uh, the weekend when the moon was in an earth sign and, uh, you know, my cousin just uh, got a degree in cake baking and wants to show off their skills or, you know, I mean, I don't know. So, um, so anyway, that's how it works. That's how astrology works, is it brings these different qualities through the planets, through the stars, through the experience that we have of different parts of ourselves being activated. The other thing I want to say is that all of the energies, all of the signs of the zodiac are present. They're present in your chart. They're present in every given moment. They are all there. So we can't say ever, um, you know, that it's going to be all about this and none about this. Um, we can say that, you know, maybe it's likely that the themes that come up will have this feeling or this quality to them. Um, in other words, what does that give us, right? Why would we want to do that? Okay, because we're, you know, we're human beings, we're, we're intuitive, we, we feel things and we notice things and it, what does it matter if we even know the astrology or don't know the astrology? And the answer is it doesn't. It doesn't matter, but it can give us this validation of like, oh, wow, you know, the moon was in Scorpio and uh, <laughs> everybody was moody. <laughs> like there, you know, there were things going on that weren't being spoken and, you know, it can feel like that. And we can go, oh, okay, you know, the moon was in Scorpio. That is um, why things feel the way they do. Uh, and, and also when we know that that is the quality or the theme that is present, that is going to be closest to the surface, um, then we can, uh, relax <laughs> around, you know, feeling like it doesn't, not feeling like it needs to be different, but accepting the, the way it is, accepting what is, recognizing that this is a time, a moment in time when the best way that we can go about things or approach things um, is, is to accept that, you know, there's a theme of emotions being heightened right now, or there's a theme of uh, action being important right now. So when the moon is in a fire sign, for example, it's not just the moon, it could be any planet, but we can focus on the moon because we can see it changing signs every two to two and a half days. Um, so if the moon is in a fire sign, there is a focus on action, on taking action, on being bold, on being courageous, on taking risks, trying things, um, expressing ourselves, moving energies. And uh, so anyway, when we uh, know what that quality is, um, we can work with it. We can trust ourselves. You know, when the moon is in Aries, we could say, I took a risk and, uh, you know, it felt like, uh, you know, maybe I was a little too hasty to do that. And in retrospect, I feel like I act too rash, acted too rashly or without thinking it through. But maybe that was a, a good thing because maybe in the end, I learned something that I wouldn't have learned had I not just done it, right? <laughs> Sometimes we need to just do it. Um, and so we can understand, uh, you know, okay, that Aries energy was present supporting us to um, try something, even if we, you know, without knowing what the outcome would be, because that's a way that we learn. That's the way we discover. So, um, so that is how astrology works. It gives us themes. It gives us tendencies. It gives us qualities. 
Um, it gives us sort of this field of possibility and probability um, and also a perspective, a lens through which we can understand what is going on. It is not um, telling us what's going to happen. It's not telling us uh, whether we're worthy or not, because <laughs> you're always worthy. By definition, you are human and you are worthy. Um, but here is the uh, energy of astrology that can help you uh, understand the different parts of yourself, what those different parts are learning. Um, do they come easily? Is it something that's more difficult for you? And so that's what the benefit of getting a chart reading can bring you is um, a deeper insight into things you already know, but may not have the words for. So it can uh, help you understand um, why you are processing things the way you are, why events come up in your life, what kinds of gifts they are bringing you, even if they feel challenging, how to work with those challenges, what your natural skills and abilities and tools are from your chart, what is your soul's work to do? What is it you're learning and figuring out? Um, astrology does not solve problems for us. That's up to us. It is up to us to learn who we are and to discover what we're capable of uh, as we figure out how to do this life thing um, bit by bit as we grow and learn over time. And so astrology can give us insight that supports us in that process that allows us to um, uh, be a little easier on ourselves, a little more trusting in the process and a little bit more open to possibility. So I think it is a gift. I think uh, it brings us tremendous support in our journey and can help us understand uh, the context of that journey and what it is we're learning about. So I hope that's helpful to you, how astrology works. Why does it work? What is it? Um, and thank you so much for being here. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have enjoyed this video. Like I mentioned, uh, I have tons more uh, videos. I have a daily self-care video that helps you understand the vibe of each day. Uh, I've got playlists uh, for nurses and healers, holistic practitioners. I've got a playlist on all the moon signs, so you can go find your moon sign. Just tons of stuff there, things, uh, what to look for in 2023 and more. Um, so thank you so much for being here. I'm Marina Orms. You can book time with me at astrologyheals.com uh, and uh, let me know what you think, what you're curious about, what you learned, uh, or what you would like to hear more about. All right. Thanks for being here. I will see you next time. Bye for now.